Hey guys, what's up? This is Frazetta painting with fire. And this is a documentary about the life and art of Frank Frazetta. And this is probably the only documentary ever made for, you know, for Frank Frazetta. I don't think there's any other documentaries that were ever made from here. And this is pretty cool. I love how there is right away, there is one of his best iconic pieces, which is the Conan the Barbarian um, painting. And it's beautiful. It's like really, really cool. There's a lot of, you can see there's a lot, it looks like very, very detailed and convincing. It's got the girl, um, it's got the sword, but as you can see, a lot of this painting is implied, which means like it's there, but it's not actually drawn out. There's no details in it. If you look at his hair, pretty much drawn out, you see like how everything fades into shadow. Like this arm is really detailed, but this this arm here, hardly any shadow in it. There's some detail on the, the belt and the sword hilt, but then if you look at his legs completely in shadow, like this one at all completely is just the sort of like basically the silhouette of a leg. It's not actually a fully rendered leg. And this is a lot of how Frank Frazetta's art worked. It was never, the whole body was never about a lot of detail. It was all about light and dark implied and detailed and stuff like that. And even on the back, you could see some really interesting, all of his best pieces are on the back of the DVD case. The one here with the 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 Norse guy, the, the Viking dude. There's the Death Dealer, which is that one. There's the girl, which I don't know what you call that. There's a lot of these like really cool paintings. There's this one, I think that's John Carter the, and uh, the Mars painting. And then you got some interesting stuff here. It's a photograph of him, more Conan the Barbarian. And this is another self-portrait that he did uh, it's interesting. It's a very good, accurate self-portrait, but what he did was he used a lot of, as you could tell, like a lot of different colors in it. If you see the actual piece, it's a lot of different colors in his portrait and stuff like that. And on the inside, it's really interesting because you can see the disc, the DVD, and it's got um, a picture of the Silver Warrior, which is um, a Michael Moorcock book illustration about one of his characters called um, The Eternal Champion, and this is the cover of The Silver Warrior, the um, the novel that came out at a time. It has a lot of different covers, but this is one of the coolest ones, and it's got that, so yeah. So the DVD is pretty cool. Um, it's DVD, and it comes with two discs, and I opened it up because it was on my shelf for a long time, and I haven't actually seen this in a long time. I think I, I saw this like 10 years ago or something like that because it is, I, mean, I think I bought it like 10 years ago and saw it and I only saw one disc in it. Like there's another area for another disc, but I don't know where I put the other disc. I just, it's so long ago. I, I didn't even know there were like two discs in it. I totally forgot. Um, and there's nothing else. There's no inserts or anything on the inside. It's just sort of like the chapters and everything that's in there. And I really got to find the second disc because it's got all of these different like deleted scenes. It's got fire and ice, which is like his, it, it, the fire and ice is, I did a video on that. It's his, um, it's him and Ralph Bakshi doing a animated fantasy feature, basically. And Ralph Bakshi did Wizards and he did Lord of the Rings. Uh, <coughs> a lot of like really good stuff. And so, um, and, and it, it just basically like, like, basically like breaks down all of the different things that's going on it's a lot of this oh yeah and, and the front which is really interesting I like what it says here I'll tell you what it says here um, it says this is the documentary to end all documentaries it is such a great story that is a quote by Harry Knowles from ain't it cool news there was a, um, a YouTube channel called ain't it, Co ain't it cool and it was about movies and it was about pop culture and it was this guy, Harry Knowles, and he's still around, uh, but he doesn't do Aiden Cool anymore, which is unfortunate because um, I really wanted to see more episodes of that. Um, I really was watching that. I thought it was so cool. He was like in his basement and it's got, he's got this flying shark and he's got all of this crazy stuff in his basement that he turned into like his video studio. And um, 
it's all about movies and if he talks about movies and interviews like actors and people that make movies and stuff like that real amazing uh, it's interesting that they put him on the cover of, he's not really well known and honestly like nobody knows who he is and i don't know why they even put this on the cover because honestly like like wouldn't they put someone who's more well known and <laughs> i don't know man because like he's he, he i think he was well known he's very like well known around comic cons and comic conventions and stuff like that but yeah um so it's pretty cool i like the as you can see like more art here you can see like how it's it's a very, very good, captivating picture, very convincing, but as you can see, it's just shadow here with no detail, like light here, so bright that there's no detail either, it blinds out the detail. The sword is just a shape of a sword with some white on the edge of it, and even like a, a ray of white just like shining down and also no detail, but it looks totally convincing. And Frazetta did that, he, he basically knew how to draw something that was totally convincing but so much in his own style that no one did the style before him he's completely original which i always think like the best artists in the world wh whatever we call the best artist we call them that because they did something they changed art somehow they made it interesting van gogh painted in a way that nobody else painted and it also you know it kind of started the whole well, maybe it didn't start it, but it depends on like, what happened first, but it became that whole impressionist thing where people, you know, like never, no one ever drew like, like, like Van Gogh. No one drew like the impressionists. Uh, Monet, no one drew like Monet because before Monet, before Van Gogh, you would have the, 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 um, the artists that are in the museums. You know, you would have uh, Da Vinci and Michelangelo and you would have Rembrandt. You know, and these guys drew, I mean, even Michelangelo was like revolutionary in how they drew. The whole Renaissance art thing was a complete revolution. It was like the 3D, fully rendered, beautiful oil paintings that they did at the time, which if you go into the medieval stuff, it's all like two dimensional and like, it's not realistic looking at all. And then it changed to that. And so this is a lot different. No one like, he started painting like in the 50s and nobody painted like this. Nobody painted, there wasn't a lot of fantasy art. There wasn't a lot of Conan the Barbarian. Nobody painted that and nobody painted it that well. You know, if you look at um, some of the people that painted in the 50s, nothing like this. There was no fantasy, you know? And yes, he was all about the 50s. He painted girls like they looked in the 50s and guys like they looked in the 50s, the whole style. He painted like, you know, his fantasy characters were Conan, but there were also Tarzan, there were also Buck Rogers, you know, there were also like John Carter and stuff like that. You know, all of these older heroes and all the way into the 70s where he painted The Eternal Champion, which is like one of the best like books of all time. If you want to read something really good fantasy, read The Eternal Champion by Michael Moorcock, The Silver Warrior. It's got a cover like that. Amazing. It's this freaking guy in full armor with a chariot being led by polar bears, for God's sakes, for, of all things. And yes, there's so much stuff. I've been reading what's on the, like the second disc that I, I think I know where it is. I've got like a stack of discs. I, I think I know where it is. Um, but I gotta find it. It's not in here. And I gotta put it back to its home in this thing. Because there's so much good stuff in the second disc. Fire and Ice, which I have it on other discs, so I have that. That's like the main thing they have on the second disc. Um, and the other stuff was like deleted scenes, outtakes, and stories, which I don't remember they were that great, but um, still, I, you know, I'd love to have that. And so the story is about Frazetta all the way back to when he was a kid, all the way back to that he was basically very talented with drawing and painting. I don't know if he went to like art school. I don't think he did. Um, or if he did, it wasn't like... I'm not sure that, like if he did or not. Like if if he did go to art school, it wasn't it didn't make him it didn't form him into an artist that could have been happening at the time. Like even if he did go to art school, what he got out of that was maybe some technique and stuff like that, but his whole style was so different than any of the other styles that were coming out at the time that um nobody painted like him and a lot of people thought he was a genius 
and you know he did a lot of painting he didn't do like comic book art but he did a lot of illustration a lot of his stuff was oil painting a lot of his stuff was fantasy art and stuff like that and a lot of his um the uh the characters were like weird i mean they were cool they were just like characters that you would you would see in a fantasy book or fantasy movie not everything he did was fantasy art a lot of the stuff he did was just regular art he did portraiture he did self-portraits he did a lot of portraits of his wife um he did a lot of portraits of her like a lot like he painted her a lot in different ways with oils and with like just pencils and stuff like that he painted her and stuff like that so um yeah the, the documentary is 92 minutes long it's on it's with dolby it's got widescreen it's not rated and it just text, talks about his life, his career. It, it's a lot. It's got a lot of him talking. Talk. He talks about his art and uh, in depth about what it means and why he does it and and what the different and how the different characters came about. A lot of interesting stuff about his art. This is the only documentary, as far as I know. I haven't seen any content on youtube about it like if you look at the you know a documentary like um robert crumb his documentary he did a he did they, there were two documentaries one was okay of a documentary and you can watch it on youtube there was another documentary that was was a little bit like um it was really better really really good it was called crumb and uh there was a great documentary and it was a great piece about not just his art and his work about his life and who he is and what he believes and what he thinks and the underground comics and the whole uh, censoring comics and censoring art movement and what's okay to draw and what's not okay to draw. And he gets a lot of criticism from people because he draws what he wants and a lot of his outrageous, weird shit that is, comes out of his head. You know, and he's just like, well, that's what I draw and that's what I draw. And that's like every artist is, is like that. And, you know, it's like, why do you draw this? And people criticize and go, why did you draw that? Why did you draw this? And honestly, it's just because I wanted to. It's like, well, I draw what I draw. You know, that's pretty much the whole appeal of art is you do what you like, you do what you want, and it can't be wrong or right. So, I mean, if you do something that is controversial, you know, um, sexist or something like that, controversial or like um, has controversial content, obviously it's going to be criticized, you know. But the artist is just like, I'm the artist. It's like, that's what I do. It's like freedom of speech, but instead of saying it, you draw it. And when you're the artist, you know, maybe you get criticized, but you can get criticized for something you said, but you have absolutely the right to say it, right? Unless it's like really wrong. I mean, obviously there's some, there's, there's wrong. I mean, you could draw stuff that's really, really wrong, but then still it's only somebody's opinion that it's wrong. Some, you ask somebody else and they'll say there's nothing wrong with it, you know? So that's the thing about that. And I love the color in this. And if you see like a lot of the work that he did, it's, it's not, you can see like he just had a color scheme. Okay, like see that? Like here we have yellow basically. Like, the, like most of the painting is yellow. Even if it's in the back, it's still mostly yellow. This is black and white and gray with some red. The red is just like fire, yeah, whatever. But basically, look, the whole horse in him is black. Behind him is white and red and, and gray. Here we have oranges and, and the girl is in, in very, very bright light. So she's just like reflecting light and you can't see a lot of detail on her. But you can see a lot of detail on the column and the whole thing is orange and black. Everything, the rest of it is black. It's in darkness. Same thing here, a big orange circle and everything else is like pretty much dark. You know, it's like him, you know, he looks like a person. But even like here, look, she's bright white and stuff. And everything else is like green and black in the back. So he has his, he had his color schemes. Now, what's interesting about the story is if you watch it, there's a couple of things that they talk about with Frazetta that's interesting. One thing that they talk about is he doesn't use reference art, reference photos or reference pieces. Reference is... You look at like a model or you look at a photo to know what something looks like. Because if you just draw from memory, if you draw because like you remember what something looks like, if you draw a car, for example, uh, you might draw it pretty accurately, um, but you probably will draw it a lot more accurately if you have a picture of a car next to you 
So you can look at the picture and go, okay, that's what a car looks like. Now with a car, it's not that hard to draw it pretty accurately and convincingly, but with someone's face, with a portrait, very, very difficult to do that. Do you remember exactly what someone looks like? Can you draw that, you know? It's a lot easier if that person is sitting next to you for the, for the portrait or you have a photo of them so you can look at the photo. Even if you don't copy it exactly, you can look at the photo and get, and get a better idea of whatever, what they look like, what the color of their eyes are, how wide apart are their eyes, like how are, is their face like uh, situated, you know, where is their nose and mouth, wh how does the hair look like? Because once you get into like detail, 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 Unless you know exactly like what you're drawing, it's it's not going to come out accurate. It's very very hard to or, to draw a person without reference. And even though I think he used a lot of reference when you did um, portraiture, because everyone does that, because like you can't draw himself, you know, without a reference. There's just no no way. I think he used the mirror for that. Um, you you know it, he was known for not using reference in his paintings. And that kind of makes sense as why it just, it doesn't look, re like it looks realistic, but it's actually not realistic. It's just convincing. You know, a lot of the stuff that he just didn't do, like he could not get, this is even though it looks like a muscular guy, it looks like Conan the Barbarian, it's not exactly what a muscular guy looks like. I mean, they look muscular, but just the upper body, right? It's not exactly what like every like muscular guy looked like. You can't get a face like that. Like who who has a face like that? Like nobody, you know? And so it's the same thing with the bodies and like this. Maybe maybe the pose could have been referenced and whatever, but most of it wasn't. But he was known for not using reference. Um, but I'm not sure that, that that's the case all the time. I think that he probably didn't use reference sometimes and he did reuse reference other times because the reason that makes me think that is because he collected um cameras in the in the um in the documentary there's a part where he collects cameras and he just like buys them and just collects them puts them on a shelf he's got like 30 cameras in his on his shelf and the only reason you would basically if you're an artist and you're buying cameras the only reason you would buy them because there's no actual photography of his so i don't know like, why would he buy cameras and not have photography up? Like, make create photography. Why have 30 cameras and make no photography? And I think that the reason that he bought cameras is because he does take pictures of people, which he studies and looks at and maybe tries to memorize how everything looks and stuff like that. So I'm not sure that he does uh, work without reference. Um, he did, uh, what's interesting also, like, he later in his life, um, he, he was in his 70s or something like that. He was really, he was kind of old. And he, he had a stroke, like I think it was a minor stroke, but he lost the use of his right hand uh, to some degree. And what was interesting was that you know, he drew with his right hand. So what does an artist do when they lose the ability to draw with their right hand? He learned to draw with his left hand, which is like brilliant because that's, really, that's the hardest thing ever, like to like learn to draw with your other hand. Like, cause then you, you really have to like build that hand up from scratch because your, your other hand, like, that you don't use to draw or write has no, like, memory muscle in it. It doesn't know how to do it. You have to, like, it is the hardest thing ever to get to draw with that, with your other hand. But he did that. I guess it was all, his only option because he couldn't use his right hand anymore, but at least he had his left hand, and he started drawing with that. And his work was just as good. I mean, it, his work was just as amazing, and there was no difference. Um, uh, but just... Basically, the thing the thing about his art is it's just it's good. It's really good. It's original, and he never copied anybody. I don't like no one had this style before he did, but a lot of people copied him. Um, artists like Ken Kelly were very very influenced by him. I'm not gonna say people copied him, but I'm saying people were influenced by him. Just because you're influenced by an artist like Mobius and you draw things that look like Mobius's art, it doesn't mean you're copying them. Maybe you are, but there's nothing wrong with it. You, because you learn by copying, but you can also just be like influenced by that. Not only, you're copying because you love it, not because you're trying to be somebody else, somebody you're not. You're, you're, you're copying that art style because you love that art style and you think it's really, really good. Um, so a lot of people that did copy Frazetta were just inspired by him, just thought his artwork was really, really good and tried to make their own thing. 
um, there's a few artists that just remind me of Frazetta, but he was the first one to do this. Um, but if you look at his stuff, beautiful um, paintings, beautiful like color schemes, light and dark. He was the master of drama. Everything is just dramatic and really good. And I think he just had a natural feel for it. He was talented, but he just had a natural feel. He had like a really, a really good talent because I don't know who came out in art um, before him uh, that was just as talented. And I'm gonna say like Michelangelo, Da Vinci and Rembrandt were like, you know, the if you wanna go back in time to other artists that were talented, it was them. And they were the ones that really, really like created their thing and made it made it amazing. End of the 20th century, you gotta, he's definitely one of the guys. There's other people that, that were very, very talented uh, in the 20th century and they're still making art in the 21st century, but this guy's just so, like a lot of people, when you say fantasy art, they think Frazetta. They might not know any other fantasy artist, but they know Frazetta, you know? So yeah, let me know guys know what you're thinking. If uh, you ever saw this documentary, what you think about it, um, like and subscribe and share it if you want. And thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video. And take care guys, and I'll see you in another video later.